The incense, it has been lit. Let this show be- Oh wait, the, who the hell are you? Uh, oh, alright, that's right. So last time we came to this village to help them with their ghoul problem, and they were just sort of like, Yeah, we're not hiding anything. Nope. Not of interest here. So, uh... And I don't believe them. Jaws strong enough to crush armor. Thrown to the ground with great force, internal hemorrhaging. This is going to turn out to be still strong. Gotta follow it. This is going to end up being some kind of weird Starcraftian side beacon kind of malarkey. It's gonna be like, yeah, we found some way to attract ghouls to our village. You know, other than the normal way of we just threw bodies outside. Uh, and use those ghouls to kill the Nilf Guardians. Right, now I gotta loot this place first. Oh, they're bricklayers. I blame uh, the Batianoi. That's, that's my guess. Because what we learned from the second game is anyone who makes bricks obviously worships fish people. There's nothing there. Tracks lead to this house. What happened here? What do you mean, what happened? You're all still in danger, and only I can help. I'm the only one who can rid you of this threat. What do I know? Listen, you. If you don't tell me everything you know, you could all die. Understand? Is that a burden you can live with? <clears throat> You'll be dead. Can you live with that? There's tunnels beneath the village. Tunnels? Elven ruins. We scavenge them for trinkets, small treasures. Sell them to Novigrad merchants. No one expected anything bad to come of it. We dug through some rubble. Found a chamber. A beast slept inside. We felt the prop so the ceiling had collapsed. Hey, Jaryun. The monster, though. What did the monster look like? It were dark down below. Couldn't see. So how'd it kill the North Guardians? I ran. Couldn't watch it happen. Give me the key to the door. You'd go in. No. Wanna pour wax through its head, tell you your fortune. Now give me the key. <laughs> so, correct me if I'm wrong. You dug through to the monster's lair, then buried the entrance, but the Nilfgaardians opened it again to look for treasure. Beast killed the Black Ones and returned to its lair. You wanted to bury the corpses, but their stench lured ghouls to the village. Now I'm here. Sound hey, Blondie. Right? Tis as you say. Tis yes. as you say. I'm I... going down there. If I'm gone long, run. Barring the door and nailing it shut resolves nothing. There are other ways out of the tunnels. Gotta be. Now, my definition of a long time might be different than your definition of a long time. Just so you know. So, uh, how about you don't nail the door shut five minutes after I leave? Okay, thanks. Shreds. An Ekimara. Hibernated here till the villagers woke it. Ekimara? I don't really know what that is. Ekimara. It's a type of vampire. Oh, it's one of these things. All right, they looked much different in the second game. 
But, okay, I'm vaguely familiar. familiar. But I ain't nothing to fear. Ekimara's why they ain't nothing more than overgrown bats. Anonymous City Guardsman's last words. Like other vampires, Ekimaras are not, despite what village gossips might say, undead humans. They are instead post-conjunction conjunction monsters who have no particular feelings about garlic, holy water, or religious symbols. Unlike their portrayals in ballads and legends, they look nothing like handsome, pale aristocrats with charming eastern accents, though. Like katakans or nukrats, they do bear a strong resemblance to overgrown bats. They also do not suck blood from the necks of virgins with a delicate kiss-like bite. They tear them to shreds using long, sharp claws and then slurp the splattered blood off the ground. Ekimaras are unusually cruel and exceptionally swift. They are able to quickly land blow after blow, capable of smashing even the best Mahakaman-made armor into tiny shreds. They can be fought with a silver sword, remembering that they can regenerate back health over time. One should thus never attempt to tire them out, or, God forbid, wait for them to bleed to death. Instead, cut them down as quickly as possible and, if possible, burn the body to ash and scatter it to the four winds. Akingorp, Dre Dre, good evening. I don't know. I think it looks kind of nice. I don't know what's up with the, like, wispy white ghostly beard, but... Alright, so it looks like... Okay, so it's weak against a poison bomb and vampire oil, of course. And of course, Igni. But what ain't afraid of a little bit of Igni? You know what I'm saying? Finally, excuse to use that thing. Oh, dude, we're a lot of puffballs. Alright, let's, um... Let's rest for an hour. What are higher vampires? I don't know. I am so ready, Akingorp. You don't even know. I don't even know how ready I am, but I'm that ready. I'm so ready to be proud of you. Hmm. Planks can be lifted. Blah! Well done, Akinborb. If it makes you feel better, I also got a haircut today. It is way darker than I anticipated. It's still purple, and if you look under it, at it under the correct light, it's even more vibrant, but, but, it's still purple. Um, but darker than I anticipated. Now, that being said, they said it will lighten up as I wash it, but... We're haircut buddies. Arteries torn open. No mutton stash, no. I just couldn't take it anymore. The mutton stash was getting to me. I, I felt my entire life crumbling around me. I uh, Friends were leaving. I, I couldn't talk to loved ones anymore. I, I started kicking puppies and, and, and drowning cats. And I realized at that point that I just couldn't deal with the mutton stash anymore. It was just, it was ruining everything in my life. Everything. So. Whee! You hate getting your hair cut? Well, see, in my case, it's generally my girlfriend needs a model and I'm, like, the only one available. Hey, Okay, can't parry. Kind of figured it was but... Huh. 
I did not know we could destroy pillars. Nice, we got a mutagen for it. We should be able to make something new now. Great. Well, to be fair, I think we were kind of overleveled for that quest. No, level 22. Huh. Alright, to be fair, it did kind of just run in circles inside of our poison cloud for a while. And at least according to the bestiary, the thing's weak against poison. So... Right, get out of my way, rubble. Ain't nobody got no time for no damn pieces of rubble. Check the trophy. Oh! Yeah, I will in just a moment. To be fair, I'm probably going to keep the sucky this one because it gets us money. 5% bonus XP from monsters. Seeing as monsters generally give about 2 points of experience, probably rounds it up to 3 points. Which, in the long run, does actually add up. But Oh, you know what? We were also using our vampire oil. So, I mean, one of the few times we actually went into a fight being like, okay, we're going to use the correct oil right off the bat, use the correct bomb, use the correct spells, and uh, do things, everything by the book. So, who knew? Oh, you know what? We got a sword as well. Let's check that out. Oh, here it is. Ah. Plus one bonus XP from humans and non-humans. Huh. Oh! You know what else we can check? Check our decoction. Because I think the Akimura was one of the decoctions we were waiting on. Yeah! Damage dealt to foes regenerates vitality. Oh! That is awesome! I cannot wait! I'll probably forget to use it anyway! Oh, look. We could have upgraded our bomb beforehand. Or not. I am so far behind on upgrading, like, all of my bombs and potions. I am seriously lacking in this regard. I know, right? Gods, he lives. I found an Ekimara hibernating underground. It was old. Must have been asleep for centuries. An Ekimara? Vampire. Won't trouble you again. You cut off its head, drive a stake through its heart. Did what I had to. Don't go down into those tunnels anymore. Ekimara aren't known to be loners. We did hire you. Still, seems you deserve a... You bet I do. Pay up. I do very much question their uh, quest levels versus the loot you get. Achievement unlocked. Fearless Vampire Slayer. Cool. 